Thank you to Opera for sponsoring this video. We've been sleeping on how weird shark skulls are. They can look like an 18th century drawing of a sea monster, as is the case with the Mako shark. Or they can look like a spaceship made by and for ghosts. That would be your hammerhead. Or even like someone said, what if no jaw, just buzzsaw? That one's Helicoprion. It's extinct, at least. Mostly, the only pieces of a shark skeleton we ever get to see in an aquarium or museum are the jaws, which you probably just picture as two arches of cartilage holding rows and rows of pointy teeth. But they can also be very, very weird. Like, why does this shark have molars? And why did scientists have it listening to jazz? The Bizarre Beast Pin Club is currently open for subscriptions this whole month. Sign up by June 20th, and the first pin you get will be this very weird shark we're talking about today. The Port Jackson shark, Heterodontus portus jacksoni, is a subtropical species that lives near the seafloor off the southerly coasts of Australia. They're most common in rocky areas, but can be found on sandy bottoms or in seagrass beds as well. They get their common name from Sydney Harbour, which is not called Port Jackson. But actually, it is called Port Jackson sometimes, which is where they were first observed. Port Jackson sharks are the biggest species in their genus. Adult males can be over 105 centimeters long, while adult females can grow past 123 centimeters. And they they have a pair of spines, one at the front of each of their two dorsal fins, which may be part of the reason species in their genus are commonly called horned sharks. The spines on the Port Jackson shark are pointier when the sharks are younger, and at least anecdotally seem to be venomous, according to fishermen who have been on the receiving end. And maybe it's a good thing that potential venom is found in their spines and not in their mouths, because that would be one strange bite. The genus name, Heterodontus, literally refers to different teeth. These sharks have pointed ones in the front for catching prey, and rounded molar-like teeth for crushing shells in the back. This gives the Port Jackson shark a very distinctive mouth. They use this specialized setup to eat small prey off the sea floor, including sea urchins, bristleworms, mollusks, crustaceans, and small fish. Younger individuals have a higher proportion of the pointier teeth, suggesting that softer-bodied animals make up more of the shark's diet earlier in development. Adult females also use this unique mouth to cram their uniquely double helix-shaped egg cases into rock crevices, where they harden and stay until the baby sharks emerge ten or so months later. This is a handy strategy for stashing eggs, but it's also a long time for those eggs to stay safe. Snails, rays, and other predatory fish all commonly snack on them. And the mouth of the Port Jackson shark itself is adapted to break through these carrot and cork screws, and males in particular have been observed to suck out the yolks, as do other members of the Heterodontus genus. Cannibalism may seem like strange behavior for an otherwise mild-mannered shark, but the breeding season uses up a lot of energy, which eggs are a great source of. Plus, females do lay backups, about 10 to 16 eggs per year, so nobody's actually eating all of the next generation. But what does all that crunching do to their teeth? It turns out it wears them down in a way that is basically self-sharpening. So even though a new row of teeth is always on deck, because that's just how shark teeth work, these guys can really go to town on their extra crunchy meals. And other studies of the teeth of Port Jackson sharks have even shown that despite rising ocean temperatures likely leading to weaker teeth in sharks, the core corresponding increase in ocean acidity actually counterbalances this. The sharks in the study incorporated more fluoride in their teeth as they developed in high-temp, high-acidity conditions, helping to reinforce those teeth in a way that the study team hopes may be broadly applicable to other sharks in the coming decades of climate change. But beyond having just a fascinating mouth, H. portis jacksoni is just like a pretty chill species overall, which has made them and other horned sharks an appealing subject for scientists to study. And some of the studies uh, are kind of offbeat. Researchers interested in basic classical conditioning tried to see if the sharks could be trained to associate a stimulus with a reward, like Pavlov's dog. Before this experiment, nobody knew much about how bottom-dwelling sharks learned, or anything about how sharks might respond to conditioning with a delayed reward. The sharks were exposed to either an LED light or a stream of air bubbles, and then given a chunk of squid to eat either during or after that stimulus. Individuals 
learned to respond in under five days, and some remembered the training for as long as 40 days. So, like, a pretty cool first look at the learning capabilities of sharks and rays, and some strong evidence that these guys may be smarter than we give them credit for. Another team wanted to know more about how Port Jackson sharks reacted to novel stimuli, especially auditory cues. After all, different animals are bound to have varying sensitivity to types of stimuli, depending on their environment. This team leaned hard on the novel part of novel stimuli. The initial reward conditioning cue was Oscar Peterson's 1966 jazz piano piece, Bossa Beguine. And sure enough, more than half of the tested individuals learned to associate the song with a reward. They were later challenged to distinguish between that audio cue and one they hadn't been exposed to yet, Philip Glass's 1989 classic Metamorphosis 1. But the sharks could not tell the difference between the jazz and the classical recordings. So much for their future career as music critics. The same team actually later looked at whether warming ocean temperatures might have an effect on the Port Jackson shark's ability to learn. What they found was that although higher incubation temperatures had a pretty negative effect on survival rates, they had a significantly positive effect on how fast the sharks could learn. And that might give them a competitive advantage in the face of climate change. Cooler still, because of the task the sharks were taught, this study was also the first to demonstrate any type of shark or ray having a broad sense of how numbers work. But why any of this? Why train Port Jackson sharks to like jazz or see how fast they can learn the difference between three and six? Well, on the one hand, animal cognition is just neat, and lots of basic research ends up having unexpected benefits down the road. Think Gila monster venom leading to new diabetes drugs. But the results of these studies also reveal, like, brand new things about sharks of all kinds. One Port Jackson shark study found that the frequency of rewards matters more than the size of rewards when it comes to conditioning, which could, for example, have safety implications for tourism outfits that feed sharks. And certainly, the climate change connections are hard to ignore in any studies where they show up. Put simply, Port Jackson sharks are weird to us, and that catches our interest. And that makes scientists want to work more with them, and that has turned them into a decent model for sharks in general. With over 400 species of sharks in the world, the least surprising thing about them should be their ability to surprise us. And here at Bizarre Beasts, we like to focus on sharks that are a little off the beaten path. Sharks with appearances or behaviors that don't quite fit the popular apex predator narrative that we usually associate with these cartilaginous creatures. Asking questions about any one of them can uncover all kinds of surprising ways these beasts are such successful members of their marine ecosystems. The Port Jackson shark, with its molars, venom, and musical taste, just happens to be bizarre enough to prompt some especially creative questions. And in doing so, they've helped us learn more about what makes all sharks so amazing. You can sign up for the pin club at BizarreBeastsShow.com to help keep the channel going. If you want a Port Jackson shark to be your first pin, you have to sign up by June 20th. And perhaps you want to support the show and keep up with our team another way, where well, you can find exclusive updates, get early access to content, and more by signing up for our newsletter at complexly.info slash beastsnews. And now, for some bonus facts. Another idiosyncrasy of the Port Jackson shark is that these sharks can eat and breathe at the same time, an ability you don't find in just any shark. They can actively pump water through their gills through what's called buckle pumping, which means they don't need to keep moving in order to breathe. Consequently, this also makes them one of the only shark species we know of that truly sleeps, as opposed to just resting while motionless. But this unique ability only partly explains why scientists in August of 2024 found thousands of female Port Jackson sharks asleep together on the seafloor between Tasmania and mainland Australia. And this is not the first time that sharks have been spotted doing this in the exact same place, either. A similar site greeted surveying researchers six years prior. Port Jackson sharks are known to separate into all male and all female groups throughout the year, intermingling only to mate. So experts wonder if this area might be an important rest stop on the female's way to lay their eggs for the season. Maybe they travel together to meet up with the males, and this one area of Beagle Marine Park just happens to provide the perfect combination of tasty scallops and a safe, comfy seabed to help these sharks on their journey north. Whatever the case, we could chalk it up as one more bizarre trait for this month's beast.
Thank you to Opera for sponsoring this video. Opera is faster, smoother, and smarter than the browsers you've used in the past. The Opera browser has new tab capabilities and dynamic themes for a truly modern browsing experience. Opera also has features that help us make this show. When we are finding images for Bizarre Beasts, we end up with a lot of open tabs to everything from research papers and stock footage websites to museum archives and travel blogs. It can be a bit of a mess. Opera's tab islands make this much easier to manage and actually find what you're looking for. You can organize all your tabs and collapse them, and thanks to tab traces, I know which tabs I've visited most recently. The darker the underscore, the more recently I've visited it. And if in all those tabs you find an image but you aren't totally sure if it's the critter you think it is, Opera makes it really easy to pull up a split screen so you can have your mystery image on one side and your reference image on the other. They've got tons of other features like custom browser themes and a floating music player. Get the Opera browser and start organizing that tab chaos right now. Download Opera for free at the link in the description.